Welcome to Believing the Bizarre, where we dive into the unknown and the unusual, and tell you whether or not we find it believable. Once again, we have listener stories. They're great. This is an old one. I feel like I feel like every time we do one of these, we're apologizing. They're all old now. It's our fault. We I'm, we got like four or five still on deck, and I feel so bad. I feel like these people are just like, they've forgotten about us. It's because we're trash. That's we have forgot is. about you. No, we no, haven't. No, we just... Uh, it, we, I'm not going to say I underestimated the amount of work to listen to stories. I'm not going to say that. That's not true. No, it's, it's just... just it's, it, there's a lot of content. Yeah. We already have our weekly episodes. All the content we put out on social media, plus, believe it or not, we do have lives outside of <laughs> these 25. We don't just disappear into the ether until the next Tuesday. I wish I could just make this. That's fine. Fun fact. If you want to hear this listener submission, I almost said right from the horse's mouth. Say out of the source. That's a pretty, it's a pretty not nice uh, expression. Yeah. I don't like that. I wouldn't call Isaac a horse. <laughs> no, I wouldn't either. He's a strong gentleman. Say a, He's a, probably strong as a horse. A bull. A yeah. A bull. bull. If you want to hear the story directly from the storyteller. We were interviewed on, what do you call it, interview or just kind of hang out? We, we were on Hidden in the Shadows podcast as guests. And they asked us some questions about ourselves. Yes. And, and we answered them, mostly. And this story was told on there, which then became this listener submission, which this was like a month ago, a month and a half ago. It came out in the beginning of October. Really? Mm-hmm. But we recorded that. Well, I mean, I'm not counting the recording. Okay, okay. So this is about a month old. So if you want to listen to the full story in its entirety, because as you know, our episodes are a little bit more on the petite side. Um, so this is going to be a little bit of a summer. I, I don't know what Charlie's going to do here. Maybe maybe this is going to be a four-hour long episode. I hope you have a long car ride. <laughs> Just kidding. No way. But if you want to listen to the entire story right from the source himself in its entirety, go check out Hidden in the Shadows, the Believing the Bizarre episode. With that being said, let's dive into the multi-universe theory. The main character of this story is Isaac, who has been dealing with this condition. I'd call it a condition. And he's one of the hosts of Hidden in the Shadows. And he's like, guys, I want you to do the story. So we're going to do the story. Um, it's pretty fun. I don't know if he'd say it was fun, but it's fun to listen to. It was mind-blowing to listen to, to be honest. So he said it started when he was 16. He was getting something he called, he coined it himself, Deezers. He combined deja vu with the word seizure and they only lasted for like 15 20 seconds and inside that is a seven second window where he would see something and he would get like these really bad headaches he would get physical effects like his head would hurt and his vision would like double he would get nauseous and he couldn't breathe and this would happen consistently for approximately three times a day and his mother decided that they needed to go to the doctor they did the CT scans, the CAT scans, the CAT scans. Everything you see on a house in ER, basically. Yeah. And they did tests, and they did find something, but it was something called a polyp, which all it really does is affect his smell sensitivity for certain things. Like COVID. <laughs> yeah, kind of. When he started going through this, he talked to people that he knew had seizures, and he seemed it was the closest thing to a seizure. So, like, he was like, it's not exactly a seizure, but that's what I think it might be close to. And from the ages of 20 to 28, the phenomenon seemed to stop. It just vanished. And then when he was 29, he seemed to go through his like own renaissance. And he felt he was able to have better memory. He was able to have better recall. He like leveled up. Yeah, you could say that. He felt more qualified. So he went back and he looked at his past experiences, his episodes, as he says, and looking back at them they started to reemerge. So he kind of like opened up the... Yeah, he picked out a scab that was closed. Yeah, and then it opened up and it gushed everywhere. Yeah, and they got actually worse from when he was a kid. So when he's like 29, 30, it got really bad. So like he actually almost caused a car accident because of how bad this was. Isaac did some more research on seizures specifically and found that what he was experiencing was not categorized that way. He would get symptoms like a foreshock of a seizure, which is something that happens. Like he would get that hazy kind of feeling that something was coming. But his episodes weren't seizures. 
he did actually get his brain recently re-examined because he went back to the doctor for something unrelated. And Isaac found himself looking into quantum physics. As most people would. <laughs> I know, right? I give him credit for that because like, I'm all down for the research and the Wikipedia and the, web, the WebMD. He contributed to his, his awakening because he said in high school he liked it. But after he had like this reawakening, this renaissance, he found himself understanding it easier. I mean, that would make sense. Yeah. And he found that this these episodes fit into this whole realm of quantum physics. And he was explaining it through Schrodinger's cat. Every decision we've ever made branches off and creates a different world. So like Schrodinger's cat is the theory that if you put a cat in a box, it's alive and dead at the same time. Because both possibilities could be true until you identify which one in this reality is true. Exactly. Unless it meows, then you know. <laughs> then you know, even if you can't see it. <laughs> he feels as though these episodes act as like a mirror to allow him to view into another world. After years of this happening, he can focus and see what may be himself or a similar version of himself, darker skin or lighter skin or thinner or bigger, and also in different places, different environments. But they go one step further. These episodes also seem to alter his reality. Isaac gave us this one anecdote. His coworker saw his friend that he's known for like two or three years. He saw that he had a gap tooth one day, and that didn't make sense to him because this gap tooth he would have seen it before. He would have made fun of it. They would have joked about it. It would have been acknowledged. But one day, after a couple of years, he just all of a sudden has gap teeth. And it just it doesn't add up for him. So he contributes that to switching realities or something switching. Now, I, if I remember correctly, because I, I haven't listened to the episode in a while, does he, he, his friend claims that he's had it. His whole life. Right? Oh, yeah. His friend claims it's always there. Otherwise, you could argue that it occurred over time. No, no, his friend says, I've always had this. Right, and, and my reaction when he was telling the story, which m- maybe some of you are having, which doesn't fit the narrative, is that I would have, I would ask somebody else, like I would, I would ask, you know, his co-host, you know, I would ask my wife or my friends, I would say, has so-and-so always had this? And you would be anticipating them to say no, but if you're the only person that's noticing the differences in the reality, it's kind of like you're your own book character. It's like, it's through your perspective only. Yeah. But that would be like, that would be an amazing moment. I think if, if he asked somebody, does so-and-so have a gap tooth? And they're like, no, why? It'd kind of be like that moment in the film where they're like, I'm not crazy. And you're like, okay, we're going to solve this, which obviously he didn't get to have. No, he never had that. He still does not have that. But life's not a movie. (laughs) That's right. He likened it to, all of a sudden, one day, his friend having a mustache, and he always, apparently, he said he always had a mustache. It, it just, it appeared overnight. I've never been that reality, because I can't <laughs> grow a mustache. Isaac would even experience echoes from the episode to the reality he was in. So, he had one just before he talked to us, actually. His sister-in-law... I'm just thinking, like, he saw us, and I was tall, and you had, like, <laughs> blonde hair and, a, a like, a um, lumberjack beard. <laughs> And then he saw us. He's like, oh, I want to go back to that reality. So he had one where his sister-in-law was sitting on a daybed in the alternate reality. And while he was seeing this other universe, there was an echo of her saying, Isaac, what's wrong? But as he snaps back to reality, he hears the echo of hearing wrong. So like in his vision, he heard what's wrong. And when he came back, like it lasted for a second, like a remnant of that vision or what have you existed where he he still heard the word wrong. Yes, but only because his sister-in-law in in his reality said that same thing. In the real, so the real, the realities merged for a second. Yeah. Were you asking if he was married to his sister-in-law? No, (laughs) to his, to 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 Megan. Megan. Yeah. Okay. But she Uh, wasn't in that story. I mean, she was, but she wasn't a crucial role. So it leaves him with this question. Is he the one that's changing worlds or are the worlds changing around him? See, that's an interesting point because like, let's talk about his friend with a gap in his teeth. Sure. Like if you, if you're the character of your story, then you might, and the world changes around you, you would be the only person to notice differences. Like you wouldn't be able to go to a friend and be like, oh, did you notice his gap teeth? And they're like. It's always been that way because the whole reality changed around him. It would be like him jumping realities, but that that's that's a very him centric idea. And I'm not saying it's not true. And if it's 
that fits into the theory that he would be the one jumping realities rather than realities jumping around him. Because a whole universe revolving around one person is, to me, less believable than that he might be jumping. Now, to him, obviously, it's external. So to him, it might feel like things are changing to him. But really, he might be the one changing to other realities. What was your question? (laughs) Is he changing or the universe is changing? He's changing. Okay. I actually have my friend Nick. I talked to him about this. Does he have a gap tooth? He doesn't. (laughs) No, I actually really like Nick. He's really awesome. And if you see any of our merchandise photos on Instagram, he helped with some of them. And he he has a great eye for that stuff. He's he's fantastic. Actually, he's been my friend since high school. It's been a long time. But he's got this story that fits incredibly well with Isaac's story. And it's actually a little scary. Like, it's a little f***ing weird. Dare you say bizarre? <laughs> so this is Nick's story. I got his permission to read this. Okay, good. Handwritten. Um, <laughs> handwritten permission. I mean, as a text, but... Okay. All right. So I was I was with Nick while we were working on his mother's garage. So we were, like, painting outside. And it's a nice summer day. And he all of a sudden, he tells me about this story. What, where, when, what year? The story takes place in 2010. I guess we were working in the garage probably like 2012. So I was young. We were young. I was still 20, dude. (sighs) So you were still 21. Yeah, we were young. So back in late winter, early spring of 2010, Nick was going on a few dates with this guy. Nick is gay. (laughs) Nick was going on a few dates with this guy about an hour away. After the second date, he put in quotation marks. I don't know why. After the second date, he was on his way back home alone. And it was pretty dark. It was like 10 or 11 o'clock at night, which I'm surprised he was awake. And this stretch of highway did not have any lights. And Nick was tired because it's way past his bedtime. And he's like zoning out while he's driving. And while he's zoning, he's going down this rural highway. When Nick looked up, there was a disabled car, half in the road, half in the shoulder. So the car was broken down in the shoulder and in the road. And he sees a person standing in front of the car. And there is another car. So it's a, it's a two-car situation so someone had stopped behind the car that's in the road and the shoulder he looks up and slams on the brake and he didn't he didn't notice the person until like the last second and he was going about 70 miles an hour nick winced and he closed his eyes and he prepared for the crash and he vividly remembers hitting the car and the person in front of him then he opened his eyes and he was about 200 feet away from the crash where it was supposed to be But at that point, he had enough time to slam on the brakes. He skidded to a halt literally just in time so he would not hit the person. After that, he made it home safely. After this, Nick developed a theory to which I really liked. Called Final Destination. (laughs) Final Destination 2? didn't die. Final Destination 3. Well, not yet. No, I don't (laughs) want to put that juju on Nick. He's a good dude. I'm just saying that this is Final Destination. So the theory goes, it goes off quantum mechanics, quantum theory. Just like Isaac's. I feel like you can put quantum in front of any word. (laughs) Quantum cactus. Yeah, yeah. It's like I got to feed my cat some quantum quantum meow mix. Got to get some quantum tacos. (laughs) Yes. So in this theory, every action we take or don't creates a new universe. And Nick says, I think there is a weak point that these universes timelines in which we ourselves can cross over from one to the other, where things are just slightly different from when you remember them. Kind of like what Isaac was talking about, the mirrors, right? Yes. And this can explain like things like the Mandela effect or ghost phenomenons or things of that kind of nature, basically the whole podcast, and maybe even Isaac's experience as well. He goes on to say, maybe this gives us a second chance in some way, some some reason he was spared that night. And some people that... I mean, if you think about somebody dying in a freak accident, how many chances do you think they had? <laughs> they just, I don't know. They just keep screwing them up. But Nick says I he is convinced that he died that day in another universe. And oh god, that still gives me chills. I wrote that gives me chills. It still gives me chills. Just thinking about that. Nick felt as though he was physically transported to another universe, one that gave him just enough time to stop. Why him? Why then? Who knows. Nick's final thoughts. It raises a bunch of questions, and who knows if it was just a figment of my brain or whatever, but I don't know. It changed me, and that's all that matters. That's a quote. So, it's weird to meet. Would you like to meet me on the discussion? Yes. Okay. So, what strikes me about these is just how f***ing similar they are. Right? Yes. Uh, it. 
I feel like it's not every day you meet someone that has personal experiences that would lend themselves to a multiverse, you know, parallel universe theory. And the fact that you at least have run into two yeah, is statistically a little crazy. It's, it's weird though. Like, like when Isaac was telling us his story, I was like, that's, this is very familiar. Although Nix was only one time. Maybe that's the difference. I don't know. Right. But also Isaac went through a large gap where it, like, I guess it shows that there, it, it, there's no consistency. Like Isaac had it for a long time and then it was gone and now it's back. So maybe that it just shows that it's, it's not either you have it or you don't. We could develop it. I don't think we will. But Nick, maybe he hasn't hit his yet. Like, let's say if there is a number to it, make it arbitrary. Let's say there's 30 years. Maybe Isaac's is split up and maybe Nick won't hit his until the 50s or, you know, his 50s. He'll be alive in the 2050s. So maybe I did mean that. I meant the 2050s. <laughs> um, I did do some research onto the string theory and it's a real theory. Like it's, it's mathematically, it's the idea is that the universe can't make its mind up on one decision, so it's making multiples of both. And it's ever-expanding. I'm not saying yeah. that necessarily makes this more valid. I just mean, if you bu- if you believe that the universe is ever-expanding, it just seems like there's just more opportunities, more growth, things are changing. And I don't, I can't go too far into this because I didn't do enough research and I don't want to start talking about things I don't know about, even though I do a pretty damn good job about that. <laughs> But, I mean, there's a lot of people that believe we're in a simulation. Yeah. So it's not like it's crazy to think that a large majority of people either are having these experiences or it's not, at this point in our world, I don't think it's hard for people to believe in different realities. Because the Mandela effect caught on, um, that, I mean, that's one of the most- That caught on fire. That's one of the most popular examples, like the Berenstein Bears and everything. I mean, people are, that's not a personal experience unless you had a personal experience with that you know, the book or the stories, but it's kind of like, I think people are more accepting into understanding this or believing it because of stuff like the Mandela effect or the people that are believing in a simulation. I mean, I've, I've read and I I actually, have you ever seen the sky flash? Like there was a glitch. Yes. I kind of reel myself back because I tend, I try to be a little bit more on the real, I don't want to say realistic because that makes it seem like everything else isn't. I try and reel myself in. I don't want to go off the the crazy end into conspiracy theories. It, well, outside these 25 minutes. But I I have had moments where it looked like the sky flashes. And that's when I started kind of wondering. You know, some people think like there's no real sky or atmosphere. We're in a globe. I, I feel bad. I feel like we're going completely... We're going more into the theory than their specific stories. But to, to touch on their specific stories... It's what it stories, lands on. Yeah. yeah. Here's why I'm more... A personal choice. Why I'm a little bit more apt to find these more towards the believable end of the scale. I do not believe everything happens for a reason. When people say everything happens for a reason, I mean, and I'm not tying that to like a religious thing. I'm not saying there's a, you know, a deity or a God that I'm not, I'm not, I'm trying to leave that out. I just mean in general, everything is predestined for you. I don't believe that. It actually stresses me out sometimes. I like over prepare for things that haven't even happened yet. I, I live my life trying to always be prepared for the next opportunity because I, I have a knack for looking back on things and not in a negative way. I'm very happy with my life's at. But I think about like, I mean, you think about it like you're getting your master's degree in education right now. Yeah. That was a choice. Yes. So that means in five years from now, you're going to be likely somewhere else than if you wouldn't have. My current career, I loved my job that I had before my current career. And I was a little bit influenced to leave the job I loved that I was comfortable at. Not much room for growth. I wasn't really using much skill or anything, but I was comfortable. I, I could I could still be there right now, and I could still be doing that job. But because I jumped on an opportunity, like a lot of things, and this is just work. Work is a little bit arbitrary. It doesn't hold a lot of... I mean, it matters. What I'm saying is, if you look back on your life, and you look at where you are right now, there are so many choices, decisions, things in your control, things out of your control. All of that compiled is leading to you and where you are right now. Is it that hard to believe that? I mean, we already do it for fun. You think of, oh man, if I wouldn't have left for work on time, I would have missed, I wouldn't have hit, I would have got past his train and I would have got to work here, but I had to feed the cats. 
Or flip side, I'm so glad that I forgot my coat in the house because if I didn't, I would have been in this car crash because you drive past it and you see a car crash that just happened. You're like, that could have been me. Good thing I went back in and got my coat. Maybe in a different universe or parallel universe, you didn't get your coat. Or Seth MacFarlane got on the plane for 9-11 on time. That's true. Maybe There's so many things like that. Too. There's no family guy in a right. different That's... parallel universe. What? Or it just cut very, very short. I yeah. guess like three years. Now, just because you can look back and say, if I would have done this, I would have been here. Or if I would have been here, I wouldn't have done this. That doesn't necessarily mean this is true. I'm just saying it doesn't feel far-fetched. Because I believe every single decision has that effect. The butterfly effect. I think it's real. I think our decisions matter and they, they help us become who we are. So it it would be I it would be such a trip for me. I don't even know how I would process the information if I was like Isaac or Nick and I experienced him like that. Like the way he said that he would see himself first. Like that was the first part of the story. How he would see himself different. Like he was tanner. He was taller. He had different facial hair. If I like had to witness myself, I've, I've dreamt about myself in different ways, but always with a beard before I could grow a beard. And I still really can't. But like if I had a, a, a deezer, as he calls it, and I saw myself and I was just completely dead. Like, how trippy would that be? It's got to be so strange. I Going back to their points, I, I find it believable. I believe them both. I think there's absolute credit to this. Now, okay. Are you believing that they witnessed what they witnessed? Or are you believing that what they believe it is, is true? Because those are different things. We can still believe that their mind mm-hmm. put in front of them what they saw. Like, like, basically, we're saying they're not making it up. Yeah. I'm saying what, like, it's kind of the internal versus the external. Internally, they might have witnessed that, but it was something their brain, it was a trick that their own brain played on themselves externally is saying that there's parallel universes i can see the argument for both i really can because i could see isaac having some kind of seizure and then just like forcing another reality something into it and i could see nick just being tired and like i don't know catching himself or like having a like a vivid dream and then catching himself in time right but also i the fact that science thinks that string theory could be possible that these choices are possible. I know they don't have a way to transport them or like they, that's not explained at all because the, that's, that's not near the realm of thought yet. I think it's believable that one day it could be. So I believe that what they experienced was real. I think one um, fact that is helping, especially Isaac's case, is that he did have tests done on his brain. Yeah, he did. He had a CT scan and all that stuff that I don't understand. But he, I, I, what I think is he should always be in there for the next month and sacrifice <laughs> his life for a month because I don't think he was in the, I don't think he was having any tests done at the exact moment. I'm joking, obviously. Isaac, go live your life, dude. <laughs> Cause I don't want you to quit making episodes of podcasts. I like listening to him, but it would be very interesting if he was hooked up and had all that stuff being recorded during one of his epics episodes. it would be very interesting to see i would because i would love to see what happened i wouldn't be able to read it i wouldn't know it would just be like lines on a squiggle. i mean you would probably know based on the brain like the frontal or the occipital or you know like you would maybe i mean they would know i wouldn't know they, yeah, would, they know. would know it'd be terrible if i was the one behind looking at the machine but that would be interesting to see if during a test he has an episode to see what they could conclude from that yeah but like I said, I don't believe that fate. I think you build your own fate. I think yeah, um, it's kind of a, I feel like it's kind of like a, I didn't make the best decisions. And if I say there's fate, it wasn't my fault. Not to knock people that believe that. If you believe that, I could be wrong. I could very, very easily be wrong. But what I'm saying is, I think just looking back on your choices, that you can easily see different branches. So why not the idea that they could possibly be true? Like you said, there are people way smarter than us that believe these theories, have created these theories, the universe is ever growing, I'm going to give it a viable. N- and that's fair. I, but that's a, a, what, what I'm saying is, I'm thinking their theory is viable. I absolutely believe that they believe, they're, they're not like, oh, you know what would be a good story. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm, I, I 100% believe that they are seeing what they're seeing and believe it. For me, it's the internal versus the external, whether it's something in their head creating this or if it really is a parallel universe that's surrounding us. So I'm going to go viable that they're experiencing parallel universes. 
thank you for joining us on this episode. You're welcome. Oh, you were talking. I mean, thank you. You know what? It's nice to get a, a thank you <laughs> around here every now. I'm just kidding. It's. It, uh, I think this is a lot of fun. I man, I was like, I'm gonna tackle quantum theory. I'm gonna tackle it the best I can. This is like an hors d'oeuvre, by the way, and keep this in mind. This is like you go to a fancy restaurant and you you get all those courses. This is just the hors d'oeuvre. This is the little taste test. If you want to hear from Isaac exactly what he's experiencing in grand detail, make sure to go check out. First of all, check them out just because they're cool people. Him and Megan, great podcast, Hidden in the Shadows. But if you check out the episode we were on, I think they just call it Believing the Bazaar. Yeah. He goes into great detail about his experiences. So if you if you find this episode interesting, I highly recommend you go check that out and make sure you give them give them a subscribe. Subscribe to us if you haven't already. <laughs> I hope you have. But it, give them one as well because us paranormal podcasts gotta look out for each other. Also, quantum theory is insanely complicated. It's very complicated. I only scratched the th- surface. Thank you for bearing with us. If you haven't already given us five stars and left a review, we love to see that. We appreciate it and we are thrilled every time we get it. Thank you, everybody, so much for listening. As always, I'm Tyler. And I'm Charlie. And catch us next week on The Quantum Leaving the Bazaar. The podcast, as bizarre as you are.